It has been about a month since vaccine distribution started in Maryland, and the process is expected to ramp up in the coming weeks. Joining us this morning with more is Acting Deputy Secretary of the Maryland Department of Health, Dr. Jinling Chan. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So it does look like the process is starting to get faster, but supply continues to be an issue. Is that right? Yes, um, you know, we continue to get roughly the same amount that uh, we've been getting every week, but um, the Biden administration has been indicating to um, our governor and others that um, the supply should increase in the next few weeks and that they should also be able to provide us with a little bit more of a um, advance notice, so to speak. So, you know, that we'll get more information, not only just what we'll get next week, but maybe even two or three weeks. Now, of course, we've been hearing about people who should be getting vaccinated and aren't able to do so. Also, people who should not be getting vaccinated but are getting vaccinated. So what, what is happening with that? Is that something the state's monitoring? So, you know, what we're providing guidance about is, you know, uh, is the phases. And so we have expanded into 1C, but our priority is still um, individuals who are older. So 75 and older was in 1B and then the 65 to 74 year olds um, because they are at highest risk of developing complications from COVID-19. Um, but we are also beginning to vaccinate other uh, individuals, including those in critical um, infrastructure and teachers and the like. Um, but we would encourage people who are not in those priority groups to have those vaccines available for those at the highest risk. And, and are the places that are distributing the vaccine, are they able to turn away people and say, uh-uh, you're, you're cutting in line, you're, you're not ready for this yet? So I think that to the extent that we can, we are screening um, at the different sites. So if it's a, um, you know, if it's a occupation based risk um, or they're in critical infrastructure, um, we are asking, you know, that they bring a, an ID or some kind of um, identification showing that they um, do work for a company that might fit into that category or age group. Um, you know, that's an easier one usually that uh, people can show that they are of a certain age. And so, um, you know, we're encouraging that. But, you know, to the extent possible, we're trying to not turn people away either. But, um, you know, we are encouraging people who do not belong in those categories to um, to wait and be patient. We are, you know, again, getting more and more vaccines. And so that will be um, made more available to, to the community. Now, I know it's been kind of stressful for folks because the weather is playing a role here over the next couple of days and there's been some clinic cancellations. So what is the concern for those in need of their second shot? So there is a window um, for the second doses. So it's, you know, I, obviously optimal to have it on the same, you know, about 20 to eight or, um, you know, or 21 days later, depending on which vaccine, but there is a window. So, you know, we do not want people to go out into the snow, whether it's our, the staff who are vaccinating or uh, individuals um, to go out when it's dangerous outside. So there is a window of time and they will get their second dose. Seems like we're getting some conflicting information too about whether it's okay to get other vaccinations along with getting the COVID vaccine. What's your recommendation? So I think that if possible, um, if it can be delayed um, or offset by about two weeks, that would be ideal um, to um, get a COVID vaccination and any other vaccination a little bit separate, just to, because there can be side effects with um, either vaccine. And we want to be able to understand um, if there is a side effect associated with COVID vaccine or the other vaccine that we're able to distinguish. And then are you encouraging any sort of like antibody treatment for those diagnosed with COVID-19? Oh, yes, um, there is this treatment that was actually approved in November called monoclonal antibody for COVID-19. And so this is like, a, it's a laboratory created antibody that actually mimics what the uh, your body might naturally produce. And so for people who are COVID-19 positive and at our high risk of becoming hospitalized. So those who are over 65 or who have an underlying condition, um, if they have a, a, a chronic lung disease or um, heart disease, um, chronic kidney disease and others, um, they would be eligible to receive monoclonal antibody and they would need to contact a provider for a referral. We have about 11 um, infusion sites around the state. So, um, so this is something that's available to treat people 
um, with COVID-19. And what advice do you have for people who might not be so technologically savvy? I know it's really difficult, especially for maybe the population that's in their 80s to, to really try to, to deal with this, and certainly not everyone, but it, it can be, I mean, I'm technologically challenged. So what is your advice for folks? You know, um, see if there are others that might be able to assist. We have asked um, people to help their neighbors to try to navigate through. Um, there are um, available vaccines in the county level, and you know we are looking at ways that we can engage our um, our uh, departments of aging and and others to also assist. And so there is assistance out there. I would you know there are phone numbers for most of the sites that are setting up uh, vaccine uh, appointments. And just real quickly, we are getting into, I mean, it's snowing today. It's going to, you know, we've got these cold weather months and we've seen these elderly people waiting in line. Some need wheelchairs. Is, are, are you doing any sort of coordination with these hospitals to make sure that there are, is a system in place to sort of help folks so they're not standing in line for hours? Well, I think that's why um, there's an appointment system. You know, it's not a wait in line starting at three in the morning um, kind of system is that, you know, every location has a an appointment base. So that's why getting an appointment is so important to avoid having to stand in line. Yeah, unfortunately, we're still seeing those lines. So Dr. Chan, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.